<laughs> this isn't what you'd expect a nervous first-time mom to sound like. She should be sleep-deprived, anxious, worried, right? At the Christ Hospital Health Network, we try to build trust, give honesty and levity in equal measure, so you can ask any question, share any experience with someone who understands, someone that doesn't just sound like a doctor, but like a friend. The Christ Hospital Health Network, everything it takes. The Pound This Podcast is brought to you by the Christ Hospital Health Network. This is the Pound This Podcast, episode 784, listener Q&A with lactation consultant Beth Von Lurdy. I want to lose weight, but I don't know how to get started. What should I meal prep every week? How do I get those sweet booty gains? Inspiration for your healthy lifestyle. The Pound This Podcast with Amanda Valentine. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the Pound This Podcast. I am Amanda Valentine. I am excited to chat all about boobs <laughs> with my guest. What an introduction, right? Uh, is Beth Von Lurdy, did I pronounce it correctly? Yes, you did. Yay! Um, who is a lactation consultant at, at Christ Hospital. And man, when I threw it out there that I was talking to you, I got lots of questions. So we have lots of things to talk about. So, but before I go into that, tell me all, tell about you. What do you do at Christ Hospital? Tell me about your background, your studies, all of the things. Amanda, I'm, I'm a registered nurse and a board certified lactation consultant. And I've been a nurse for 40 years and an IBCLC for about 30 years. Um, I really got interested in that right before I started having children. All my children are grown. And so um, it was a passion of mine uh, because I was living it and I wanted to help other women. So I've been at Christ Hospital for 40 years and I've worked in women's health care my entire nursing career, both in Cincinnati and in Chicago. Oh, that's amazing. So I, I do want to start off before I go into all of these questions we had, because it is World Breastfeeding Month uh, that you brought up. So there's... Uh, you know, a lot to chat about here. I've never had kids, so I ha I don't know anything about this. So I had to rely on everyone else to ask questions because I don't really have any questions for me personally, other than just like curiosities. But I did have somebody mention to me, not a question, but she was just like, I really hope that you bring up. She's like that. She's like, it feels like there's shame in not breastfeeding and that using formula and she had an experience that she felt that there was conflicting opinions between the people in her life. And she's just like, I, some, I, I can't breastfeed. Why am I being shamed for it? Is that something you run into often? I'm really glad you brought that up because I think that um, there is a myth or there can be some lactation consultants who are not sensitive to, to developing a connection. And um, especially at Christ Hospital in particular, we really individualize our care and our connection with women and ask them what their goals are. I mean, we want your baby to be well fed and we want to know what your interests are, your goals are. Um, we want to support your feeding decision and that's what it's all about. So we're here as a resource to help you to answer questions. Um, you know, if you have questions, you can call us even before you give birth. Um, many hospitals in the area and in Christ Hospital as well have a lactation line and you can call and ask questions ahead of time. And that way you kind of get your concerns off the table and you get some questions answers and your mind is put at ease. But yes, there is, there have been some instances in which women have felt uncomfortable, but that the whole thing is that you develop a connection with the woman and what her goals are and answer questions that help to meet her goals. I love that there's a lactation line. Yeah, yeah, there is. <laughs> That's yeah, we amazing. sometimes take up, yeah, up to 10 phone calls a day, um, primarily people that have already given birth and they have questions after they go home because you're in the hospital such a short time and you really want to tap into the resources you have at the hospital, but a lot of questions come up after you go home. And um, as you started out to say, um, you know, we support women if they choose to formula feed. We want to make sure that you're feeding your baby um, appropriately and safely. So our goal is to make sure that your baby is well fed. So we want to help answer your questions so that you can be sure that you have enough milk, that your baby's getting enough and um, put your mind at ease when you're choosing to breastfeed. Or if you choose to formula feed, 
we want to support you so your baby's fed safely and and um, and is well fed there too. So we're we're open to whatever feeding decisions you make, and we our role is to provide information so you can make an informed decision. Well, you brought up, which rolls me perfectly into the first question that I have of, you know, you get a lot of calls about women who have not given birth yet. And somebody said, how do you set yourself up for success before birth? So, yes, I want you to tap into those resources. If you do have particular questions, many um, women will attend uh, prenatal classes. We At Christ, we have prenatal baby care classes. We have breastfeeding classes. We have um, infant safety classes. That all gives you a chance to ask a lot of questions and connect with people. Um, We also want you to, like I said, call the lactation hotline at the hospital you're giving birth at and ask to speak to the lactation consultant. I've had women who have been thinking about breastfeeding call and say, especially with the formula shortage, how do I make a good decision? And just being able to be frank with your questions and have them answered before you give birth puts your mind at ease. Awesome. And that leads me to my next question, which this is an interesting one, I think, too, where someone said, do you have any tips for larger chested women who breastfeed? Does that make a difference? It does. Sometimes sometimes it can be a little awkward to position the baby when you're large breasted or large chested. So we want to make sure that, again, we're addressing your particular concerns so that you're comfortable when you're feeding, you feel like you have your body supported, your baby supported, you understand how much milk production you're going to have. And if you're going to have a lot of milk, how to help the baby with breastfeeding and feeling uh, comfortable and relaxed. So there's a lot of little things that you can do that when you're in the hospital and giving birth to ask questions and learn how to feel comfortable when you're breastfeeding, even if you are large chested. Well, it seems, again, just from my opinion of a person who has not given birth, that from my understanding, your boobs get bigger and sore anyway with just milk production. So I'm like, if you're large chest and you already got some heavy girls hanging out with you, it seems like that would get really uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want to understand like the process. Your body really takes a couple of weeks to figure this out. And what I mean by that is um, when you first give birth, um, your body has already made breast milk. You've already started to make colostrum, which is the first milk. And really in the first 72 hours, when your body has a drop in estrogen and a drop in progesterone, you begin to make high volumes of milk. And that, like I said, it takes about three days. So you should feel that change, like your breasts are getting heavier and fuller. And um, that's, again, you want to tap into your resources to understand how to be comfortable. You might feel that fullness for about 10 days or so as your body's getting adjusted to making milk and storing milk and feeding the baby. So it is a big adjustment. Adjustment. A lot of women have a lot of questions about that and want to make sure they have enough milk. And when, you know, when is that fullness going to go away? So, yeah. Well, and you were just talking to you about having like the best positions is what, you know, a larger chested woman. What about just in any position, <clears throat> any size chest um, the next question I have is best positions to help baby latch. Like, so how, what's the best way to get that done? So the best thing you can do is really support your baby's body from head to toe. So you really want them to be in a good body alignment from the ear, shoulder to hip. So when you're holding your baby, you want them to feel close to you, tucked into you, the back of the neck supported so that your hand is cradling the neck and shoulders and that you're giving the baby's head support and you're supporting their whole torso, and that way they can relax. Um, And then the same thing with you, you wanna feel relaxed and comfortable, like you have good body support, whether that's sitting up in a chair or leaning back on the couch and having the baby on a couple of pillows or tucked in close to you and you're laying back in a laid back position. So some of the tips you wanna do is just to have baby turn towards you, have the baby really tucked in close to you and have the baby's body supported and your body supported. Okay. Awesome. And the next question, I don't even know what this is, so I'm excited to learn about this. So I said, please explain cluster feeding and how to navigate it. What is that? That's a great question. So if you don't already know, it's normal for baby to have periods of time where they cluster feed. And what we mean by that is they could feed four or five times in a, like a four to six hour span. So if you're thinking, if your perception is, oh, my baby's going to feed like every two to three hours, it's going to be, you know, kind of like a rhythm that develops. Initially, in the first three days, they don't really have a set rhythm. 
We do have it set that we want the baby to begin to feed about eight to 12 times um, in the second day of life. The first day of life, they can be sleepy. They are difficult to awake where the baby's learning how to latch on, that mom's learning how to hold the baby and get the baby attached. So there's a lot of learning going on in day one. So you might get maybe four, five, six, seven feedings in the first day of life. In the second day of life, the baby is completely different. So it throws a lot of moms for a loop because they're used to their baby being sleepy on day one. On day two, they're awake, they're alert, they want to feed a lot, and they can feed 10, 11, 12 times. And it makes the mom sometimes think, oh, I don't have enough milk or there's something wrong or my baby's not getting enough. But that is a normal feeding pattern in the first three days of life. That also happens when the baby grows, goes through a growth spurt. Uh, when a baby goes through a growth spurt, they're going to want to feed more often and they're going to cluster feed. And that helps to build your milk supply. It takes about three days of more frequent feeding and then you're going to see more milk volume produced. Well, and that brings me right into my next question of what are ways to increase your milk supply? Yep. So the number one thing is to feed your baby frequently. And what I mean by that is don't go long periods of time longer than once a day. So normally a baby will have one stretch that could last four or five hours where they don't feed and they have a deep sleep. But other than that, the baby's going to want to feed very frequently throughout the rest of the day. So you don't want to time and schedule the feedings. You want to watch your baby for hunger cues. Okay, awesome. And then next question is, how do you recommend balancing trying to eat enough calories and maintain a healthy lifestyle while breastfeeding? Yep. yep. So you really need about uh, 250 to maybe up to 500 calories more than your pregnancy diet. So you're going to continue eating uh, like you did throughout your pregnancy to grow a healthy baby. Then you're just going to add a couple snacks in. So the snacks could be cheese and crackers. It could be yogurt. It could be peanut butter and celery. You're just going to add extra protein and other snacks to maintain a healthy, you know, a healthy diet and make sure that you're getting, you know, the vitamins A, D, E, and K and all that good stuff. Yeah, never mad about getting more snacks in. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, the next question I have for you is, what do I do when my baby starts sleeping through the night? Okay, so most babies uh, feed through the night. So you might have, a, you should expect that your baby wakes up and wants to feed two or three times in the nighttime hours. So it's possible after a couple months, that your baby might feed longer stretches so you want to just ensure that you're uh, optimizing your milk volumes by making sure that your baby is feeding frequently enough to grow and, and healthily, healthily gain weight and also maintain your supply. So just to give you a little framework, when you breastfeed, you produce prolactin and those prolactin surges help to keep your milk supply up. So when you go long periods of time and you're not removing milk or frequently feeding your baby, your prolactin levels drop, and that can lead to influencing how much milk you make. So the whole goal is to feed frequently, and um, then when your baby starts sleeping through the night, you want to ensure that your baby is not going too long of a stretch, and they're not gaining weight well. So again, a, a, a thing you want to do is check in with your pediatrician. You want to have weight checks on the baby, and you want to ensure that you're removing milk frequently so that you can continue to optimize your milk supply. So the next question leads to what happens when they just start barfing it up? Where <laughs> I said, why is my baby yeah. spitting up after each feeding? So some women make a lot of milk. And not only that, they release a lot of milk at each feeding. So everybody's different. We're all different sizes, shapes, of course. We all have different breast size and shapes. We have even the milk ducts in the breast can be different diameters. So when you release your milk, it might be a really fast flow and a lot of milk. And so the baby can be taking in a lot large volume and then they get too full and they spit up. So some babies will naturally spit up because the mother has a fast flow of milk and she produces a lot. So it's not of concern as long as your baby's gaining weight well and doing well. Um, but you do want to make sure your baby doesn't get overwhelmed with the flow and they can't like if they start coughing or sputtering or anything like that, because this flow is so fast, you want to watch. 
but a little bit of spit up is normal. It's not a big deal. And, you know, not every baby does it, but it does happen at times. I could see where that would be concerning, though. You'd be like, is there something yeah. wrong with my milk? Yeah. <laughs> no. And if you are concerned, again, don't just sit there and, and think, well, what am I going to do? Please check in with either the lactation consultant or if you're really concerned about your baby's overall health, check in with your pediatrician. That's what we're here for to answer questions and put your mind at ease. So the next question is, what do I do if my baby is so upset that they cannot calm down to nurse? So you really need to know how to calm your baby. So every baby is totally different. So, you know, when we first start breastfeeding, we recommend that you have your baby skin to skin with you with a diaper on. And that's so that they can smell, feel, hear, all those senses are stimulated to get them interested in feeding um, the taste of your milk, all of those things. So if you do that and your baby just gets upset, like some babies, you undress them and they don't like to have all their clothes off. So when I'm doing a lactation consult, if I have a baby that's really highly sensitive, I'll maybe put their clothes back on. So you, and then I teach the family, how do you calm your baby? You use movement, you use sound, um, stroking, skin to skin contact. Um, you have to stop, you know, trying to feed them if they're just really, really upset. So that's the first thing is you have to learn calming techniques to calm your baby down. And, and again, look to the people that are with you to help you learn your baby's behavior and learn how to calm your baby down if they're really upset. And this, I mean, this might be a stupid question. I don't know. This is just a question I have of like, how long do you breastfeed for? Like, when do you know, like, this is the time, like, I, I stop doing this. Like, yeah. it's just, it's just a natural, like, I'm, I'm a woman and I, I feel this naturally to me or how does that work? Yeah, everybody's different. I mean, there's recommendations that your baby should exclusively get breast milk or um, by the American Academy of Pediatrics, breast milk or formula exclusively for the first six months. And then you want to begin letting your baby explore other foods as they join you at the table. When they start to be able to sit up and have some fine motor control, they're going to explore other foods. But the AAP recommends that you breastfeed exclusively for six months and then even up to a year and beyond according to your goals and your relationship with your baby and your family. And again, this is a personal decision for each woman and each family. And women can't do this alone, obviously. You have to have resources. You have to have support from your partner, support from family. And um, again, that's where you have to build that network so that you can get your questions answered. Um, and there's even lactation consultants that are available in the city that do home visits so that if you feel the need that you need to have that one-on-one -on -one contact. We also have um, outpatient lactation visits at Christ Hospital so that you can return after you've given birth and you can ask questions and again to use the phone line okay so you can call and just ask questions so it's a personal decision some women um, you know set the goal to breastfeed for six weeks or some women say I just want to try it for four months or I want to try definitely get to six months or a year everybody's really different and has a different perspective that they bring to the table and a different support system that, that helps them make that decision. Okay. Awesome. So the next question I have for you is how to incorporate pumping into the routine to build up a supply of breast milk. So I do want to mention that you don't have to pump, but this is a big concern for women today because they join the workforce and they want to make sure that they have enough milk for their first return to work. So in general, just to give you that framework, we want your baby to get all the milk you're making initially because they lose weight in the first three days. And then it takes them 10 to 14 days to, to get back to their birth weight. So those first two weeks, we really want your baby to get all the milk you're making. We don't want you to be pumping and putting it away. Um, but on the other hand, if your baby's not feeding well, some women have to begin pumping right from the start. Let's say your baby's a little early. Let's say your baby is 37 weeks or your baby's a little small and it has a little bit more difficulty feeding effectively. So those moms might need to pump from day one um, to ensure that the baby's getting their milk. Um, but in the big picture of things, you don't absolutely have to pump unless you're overly full, unless your baby's not feeding well. And then as you return, get prepared to return to work, you want to pump a couple times a week before you return to work. And, and that would typically be in the morning. 
And you do that a couple of times a week to have a little extra milk so that the first day you um, are separated from your baby, that you have some milk to give to the baby. So the number one thing I want you, the number one takeaway from this is that you don't have to pump to have a good milk supply. You wanna make sure you're feeding your baby frequently. Um, you wanna make sure your baby is growing appropriately with weight checks. And then um, if you need to pump, this would be something that either the hospital staff or the lactation consultant might tell you, you might need to start pumping right away, or um, if your baby is not feeding effectively, okay? And again, if, if you have questions about how to make sure you have enough milk for your baby, uh, again, reach out to those resources and ask questions, okay? I mean, this isn't a question. This is just a personal observation. Again, not a, as, as a non-parent of like, man, you're talking about like, you know, when you separate and how you got to pump for that first day, like just, I can't even imagine what an emotionally wrecked, hard process that is of you've just become this feeding machine to this baby and you've got your bonding and then like, no, I got to go to work. And oh my God, I just, I, I feel like you need a therapist just for that transition alone. <laughs> I think you hit the nail on the head, Amanda. It's, Sometimes women really feel torn in too. I mean, they feel like there's this work person that they are and there's this mom person that they are. And then that first separation that when they go back to work, it's really, really takes an emotional toll. Um, you know, you're really feeling almost, we talked about that guilt and shame about making the decision, but you feel guilty leaving your baby sometimes. And um, it is, a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal to try to learn how to have that rhythm, that connection as a mom to your family and your baby and your husband or partner. And then again, being a working woman who's productive in the workforce and feels uh, fulfilled and connected and at work too. So it's a big deal. It really, really is. And it's a big, big transition. Well, that's why I just think it's so great that you, you offer so many resources because it's like, there's so many questions and there's so much to do and learn. And it's such an important role to have. I mean, it is literally, you are keeping someone alive that it's like, and you were trying to juggle like all of these things of like, how could you possibly, possibly do that without a support system. It just feels like that would be absolutely impossible. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that's a big consideration for a lot of women. You know, you, like I said earlier, you cannot do this alone. You need to have your, your support system to, to, to do all these things, to breastfeed, to be a mom, to be a partner, all those things. So yeah, it's, it's really important. Yeah. So the next question I have for you is how do I build a milk supply from pumping while still ensuring that my baby has enough to eat from the breast? Absolutely. So again, especially in the first couple of weeks, we want your baby to get all the milk you're making. We want to make sure the baby's back to birth weight. So if your baby is not back to birth weight by the time they're 10 to 14 days old, that's where we need to look and figure out what's going on. Do we need to add pumped milk? Do we need to add additional milk? Um, all of those things are really important. So we want to make sure that you know when you um, are ready to go home that you feel confident about what to look for. You know, we want to look for, um, is the baby eating 8 to 12 times a day? Is the baby feeding about 20 to 30 minutes? Is the baby having um, 5 to 6 wet diapers a day starting on day 4 and 5? Is the baby having at least 3 yellow stools that are the size of a quarter starting on day four to five. So we want to make sure that all those things are being met. And then again, we talk about pumping and you don't have to pump to build your milk supply. If your baby's healthy, full term, feeding effectively, your baby's going to do the job of ensuring you have an optimal supply. Okay. But if you have a need to pump because you need to return to work or you're going to be separated from your baby, or your baby needs extra milk because it was early and it's not, baby's not ready to do a full feeding at the breast. Those are reasons that you would want to pump. And so again, you're going to find guidance from working with the lactation team at the hospital that you deliver at. Some pediatricians have lactation consultants in the offices. And again, you know, calling to ask questions because you can't ask all the questions in the beginning. It's a lot, a lot after you give birth and then you're learning as you go. So don't hesitate to ask questions because we want to make sure your baby's growing healthfully and your, your milk supply is optimized. And the last question that I have for you is how do I acclimate my baby to a bottle when needed? Yep. 
So every baby's different. You know, you see these babies who are, again, highly sensitive babies, persons, and they react to every little change. So some babies act like it's no big deal to take an artificial nipple. Um, we want to support the baby learning how to breastfeed, how to effectively remove milk initially. So we do everything in the beginning to ensure the baby's learning how to get a good attachment, get good compression with the way that they latch onto the breast and that they're getting a good milk flow. So we want to make get that down first. So a lot of times we, we don't use a bottle unless it's absolutely necessary in the beginning. We want the baby to learn how to compress the breast and get a good feeding. And that takes a little bit of time. Um, but then you, if you want to use a bottle, eventually, if you're going to transition to a bottle, then your baby needs practice. It doesn't have to be every day. Um, let's say you're returning to work at six weeks. You could be using a bottle around four or five weeks, and you could have someone else give the baby a feeding. And when you do that, um, you, you would do it a couple times a week just to see how does your baby react. Some babies really have a hard time with something new, so it can be a challenge. So um, this is another you know, time to ask them, of course, if you're having some difficulties. So um, it's a gradual process. You might want to do it when the baby's a little sleepy because they're more relaxed and they'll try something new. Um, and you might want to do it a couple times a week initially just to see how things go. Okay, awesome. And I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but do you happen to know the number for the lactation line? I sure do. Awesome. It's 585 585-0597. And that's the main campus. And the Liberty campus is 648-7671. So at Christ Hospital, you know, we're there tw uh, seven days a week. And you can leave a message on the voice line and we'll call you back. We're usually there most days between 7 a.m. 7 p.m. So we will return your call. If you call in the evening, we'll call you right back. And the next, I call in the evening late, we'll call you the next day is what I meant to say. So we'll return your call the next day if it's after 7. That's awesome. Beth, this has been extremely informative for me and I'm sure very helpful to a lot of moms. So I really appreciate your time, your expertise and sharing all of that with me. And um, yeah, what you're doing is is just amazing of helping women in such a, like, I don't even know how to explain this is like this insane time in their life, I guess. Like, I don't even know how to put it in better terms of like, wow, talk about like a transition and just learning. And I feel like confusion and I feel like having somebody like you there to guide them through it is just absolutely amazing. So thank you for everything that you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Awesome. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. AmandaValentineBites.com